Check out our new sponsors, The Games Cube. It's a great family-run local game store boasting Australia's biggest selection of MTG singles. Use the coupon code The Eternal Gathering to get 5% off store-wide. Check their site out in the link below. G'day everyone, welcome to The Eternal Gathering. The Gatherer here with another deck tech, and we're doing modern today uh, with a deck I have to call Agony's Death Shadow, um, but really it is just a Grixis uh, Death Shadow. Um, basically, Death Shadow, if you don't know what it is, is a, uh, a deck uh, revolving around the creature, uh, the namesake of the deck, uh, and it's a 1 mana for a 13-13, however it gets minus x minus x where x is your life total. Uh, so basically you're trying to reduce your life total as quick as possible um, and in order to play this creature, and you make it a very very big threat, um, and then attacking in with that, and using other things uh, to be able to to, to buff it up, um, to give it a trample, or double strike, for to more battle rage usually. Uh, so that's what the deck is about. Uh, it plays a lot of uh, disruption uh, spells uh, for the opponent, uh, hand disruption, um, and it also plays some removal uh, to remove creatures for the death shadow to get through and do damage to the opponent. The other creature in this deck, and a relative new one, uh, which works really well as well, is uh, Scourge of the Skyclaves. So it is one in a black for a star star creature. So what you do is uh, it comes into play and its power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total amongst players. So you're hoping, obviously, your life total is going to go down quite significantly, but you also want to bring your opponent's uh, life total down as well. Uh, so let's say if uh, your life total is a 10 and so is your opponent's, then this creature is a 2 mana 10-10. Uh, it also has a kicker, but you are never going to be using that realistically in a modern game. You're never going to be able to pay um, the mana, the 7 mana, to play the kicker to half the uh, life of each player. Uh, the other creatures in this deck are Snapcaster Mages. Uh, basically there to be able to play instant sorceries uh, again later in the game a bit of uh, flexibility there and then you've got street race which uh, you're not going to be using as a creature very often very rarely you'll be playing this as a creature if you are playing this as a creature then you're probably losing and are going to lose a match uh, very shortly um, but it, it does have swamp walk which can be relevant at times um, but it's basically there as a way to cycle through your deck uh, and you're paying two life to cycle so you're also reducing your life total um, as well so that's basically what it's there for uh, planeswalkers um, are playing two royal scions these uh, are good for making your creature get that trample um, plus two plus oh, first strike and trample in turn to turn so giving that to a 8 10 10 death shadow uh, making it a, a 12 10 with trample and first strike uh, it's very relevant also being able to draw a card and then discarding card going through your deck um, is relevant as well uh, with the other plus one the minus eight not so relevant uh, drawing four cards and then uh, dealing damage to any target equal to the number of cards in your hand with this deck you're generally not going to have many cards in your hand uh, you do tend to uh, have very low cast um, creatures and spells so you're going to be playing a lot of your spells in the first uh, probably four turns so uh, you're not going to have a lot of cards in your hand to do a lot of direct damage um, but I mean if you do ever get to minus eight you probably already know you got them um, down to zero so that could be something to finish it off then we go to our spells um, there's a quite a few spells here um, and they're all here for different reasons so we've got four lightning bolts uh, lightning bolt is um, a way to remove creatures a way to do direct damage to your opponent um, and also a way to direct damage to yourself. Uh, there can be many occasions when uh, you might want to bolt uh, yourself at the end of your opponent's turn uh, if there's no creatures to target, um, if you have a, a death shadow in play to make it uh, a much stronger by three, obviously. Um, and you can also use it uh, in conjunction with your schedule of Skyclave. Uh, if your opponent's life total is at 17, let's say, and you attack in with a 3-3 and a block with a 4-4, you can uh, bolt them uh, if your life total is already below 
uh, their life total, making your Skyclave uh, stronger and uh, dealing that extra damage uh, to that creature and surviving the combat. So uh, a really cool combat trick um, in and itself. Stubborn Nile, um, the reason why I pick Grixis, there are different types of uh, shells. So you've got usually, uh, you've got Grixis, you've got your uh, Jun shells, and you've also uh, got your just basically uh, Rakdos shells as well. Uh, the Grixis shell I like uh, personally, I think all three are quite good um, in their own merits, but for me personally, I like the ability uh, with Stubborn Denial. I love this card uh, in this deck. Uh, it counters any non creature spell, um, unless control plays one, but if your creature has power 4 or greater, you just counter that spell all together for one blue mana. Uh, so in an early game, it, it's relevant. Uh, if, if someone's playing something in the early game, you can counter it. Um, and if they don't have the one mana to pay for it, then they that gets countered. But later in the game, uh, it's really good protection against uh, your own creatures if they're trying to remove it. And also any other non-creature spells that might be relevant, uh, you can just counter straight away with one blue. And then having the ability to use Snapcaster Mage to, to play that again uh, later in the game, uh, like the, the blue uh, for the Snapcaster Mage. And then the Royal Signs is also a nice kind of little bonus there as well. Uh, so basically, a, a really good card all round. Um, and it's better because in this deck because most of the time your creatures are power 4 or greater. Thoughtseize is hand disruption, turn one uh, play, turn two play. Uh, you always want this uh, hopefully in your opening hand. Um, it also gives you, it takes away the two life as well, which helps there. Uh, Tumor Battle Rage, very important card in this uh, deck. Um, it, it can win you the game straight away uh, if, if you attack with uh, a Scourge of Skyclaves or a Death Shadow, um, giving it Double Strike, and then the Ferocious there, the Power 4 Greater, it gives it Trample as well. Uh, most of the time, one turn of Battle Rage can finish the game off. Um, if your Death Shadow is a 10-10, you'll be doing 20 damage there. Um, same thing with your, your Scourge of Skyclaves. And a cool thing about uh, Scourge of Skyclaves is you're going to do the first strike first. Um, so let's say your, your Scourge of Skyclaves is a 5-5 five five, um, when it attacks, um, and there's no blockers on your opponent's side. It'll do 5 damage first, and then it'll check again for what the highest life total is, and then do damage um, equal to its power then on the, on the second um, strike, I guess. Um, the double strike there. So if it was, uh, let's say, a 5-5 five five and, you, and you do 5 damage, um, you can potentially make it a 10-10 and then finish off your opponent there on the spot um, if your life total is a 10 or below. So it's a really cool combat trick there as well with Scourge of the Skyclaves. Eganim's Awakening um, is a way to get creatures back from the graveyard, uh, but also a really good uh, card just to play for um, the land side. Uh, it, it does the 3 damage to your life total, uh, which is relevant because you want to do that. Uh, to forget and also it's relevant as in four mana i can get back a death shadow uh, five mana you can get back a death shadow and a scourge of sky Coast or a snap cast mage um, and you put them straight into the battlefield um, so very relevant uh, especially against a uh, decks that have a lot of removal uh, and are killing your creatures um, you to have a way to get them back uh, you not don't have a lot of creatures in this deck you really realistically you've got 10 creatures, um, 8 of them being the ones that you want to hit, the 2 stack casters, they're not going to win you the game um, on the on their own merits, they're just there as a support creature to, to help uh, do the extra bit of damage with um, the spells that you want to play, or um, as a blocker of some sorts. This member is our removal, um, you can pay the black mana for uh, the cost there, or use the Phyrexian. Uh, most of the time you will be using Phyrexian, paying the 4 life, um, or 2 life, uh, depending on how low your life is, uh, and it gets rid of most of the creatures in the format with a minus 5, minus 5. Uh, Mistress Bobble is another way just to cycle through the deck, and also getting some more information from your opponents, looking at the top card of their library. Then we go to our land base. Um, so we've got a lot of fetches and uh, shocks because, again, you want to be doing a lot of damage to your um, life total. So blood crypts, we've got four of, four bloodstain mines, one island, four polydotted, one steam vents, one swamp, uh, and four watery graves. I always like to play a one of um, the, the basic lands um, so that I at least 
am able to play things um, if needed um, if I'm ever running into something like a blood moon um, let's say uh, that is relevant in, in definitely some matchups uh, so I always like to have the ability to to be able to fetch um, or have some basic lands in my deck so that if I ever have a run across uh, something that will affect my non-basic lands uh, at least I can still use my basic lands to play uh, something. Sideboard wise, Alpine Moon uh, basically against Tron is what we really want to uh, be using this against. Uh, we don't want to play Blood Moon ourselves because it will, it will wreck us. Uh, so Alpine Moon is good, we can name um, one of the Tron pieces. Semerus Rejection, same thing again against Tron. Uh, Pithing Needle against any Planeswalkers um, that might be problematic. Surgical Instructions is our way of dealing with um, the opponent's uh, graveyard, uh, and the ability to pay two life again is relevant there. Uh, one Fry uh, as well. Fry is to get rid of uh, lots of fairies um, that might be a bit problematic uh, because we want to be playing at instant speed. Uh, so bringing one in there possibly could bring two in. Um, don't forget these are all kind of things that you can chop and change according to your meta. Uh, a Roiling Vortex, uh, I'm trialing out. Um, I'm trialing this out uh, against decks that uh, don't seem to be shocking themselves or using fetch lines because that's where your Scourge of Skyclays uh, comes into play there um, better when the, your opponent has to play uh, those kind of non-basic lands and is dealing incidental damage to themselves. Uh, so you, if you're versing like a mono green deck, mono white deck, that kind of stuff, um, this can be relevant, dealing one damage uh, to each player in their upkeep, um, bringing their life total down. And also it's a way uh, to stop against uh, life gaining decks. Also burn um, is another thing um, that it's it's good against because burn will be using their spells to kill our creatures. Um, and this way we, um, we can deal some damage to them um, and you know if they're playing things that are coming from suspend or something like that it can be also relevant so I'm trying this out see how it goes anger of the gods uh, get rid of the defense of, of creatures uh, your opponents has uh, three damage usually is enough to, to get rid of most creatures uh, and also your creatures are always going to be um, hopefully more than three uh, toughness so they're going to survive an anger of the gods Colonel's command um, another way uh, to get creatures back from the graveyard if you're playing uh, against someone that is uh, playing heavy removal. Um, also a way um, you know, to get rid of artifacts. Uh, very very flexible uh, card, making discard cards or two damage uh, to creatures or players that can also be relevant. Mystical dispute against, uh, against control decks really uh, is what you're playing this um, to be able to counter their counters basically. So that is the deck proper. Um, I've played a couple times. Uh, I, it, it's a it's a Death Shadow deck, so it, it can do very well um, at times. At other times, you know, if your opponent is playing a lot of removal, it, it is quite difficult um, to get through and, and keep your creatures um, alive to be able to do that extra damage. Um, basically. It is playing pretty low to the ground. Uh, most of your spells are between uh, 0 and 3. You, the only thing that's 5 mana here, um, again, is the Strict Wraiths. Uh, Lurus is usually a, a companion people use with Death Shadow. I don't like having Lurus as, an, as the uh, companion. I think having the ability, uh, one, to be able to have the, the Strict Wraiths, uh, I think is, is, is relevant. Um, and these cards here, Academy's Awakening, uh, doesn't really matter. But more so the Royal Scions, that's what I was thinking about. The Royal Scions, uh, I think, uh, are more relevant than the Lurus um, being able to play your creatures back. Uh, that's why the Academy's Awakening is in here. It, it, it already does what the Lurus does. Uh, for 4 mana, you're getting a creature back. Um, for 5 mana, you're getting a creature back, which is what Lurus will do, anyways. Yes, Lurus can do it multiple times, but Lurus itself um, is easily removed. And if you only got one copy um, in your deck, being the companion, I don't see it being super relevant. Um, basically, that is the deck we go through. We've got 12 mythics, 25 rares, 14 uncommons, 8 commons in the main, with 4 uncommons and 11 rares in the sideboard. Uh, not a very cheap deck. Um, none of the decks here uh, on this channel are cheap. Uh, these are mostly competitive decks uh, to some degree. Um, but as you can see, uh, the price, here we go, 750 
thereabouts. So yes, you, you, you got your land base is, is quite expensive, um, and you also got quite expensive uh, cards here uh, in the main board. Uh, Thought Caesars, uh, Snapcasters, Scourge of the Skyclaves, uh, even your Agony's Awakening has some price uh, to it. And in the sideboard, you got your Surgical uh, the the Extractions, which are uh, eating much of your, um, I guess, price there as well. Um, all right, so that is Agony's Death Shadow from uh, myself. Um, let me know, guys, in the comments below what you think the uh, the right kind of build for a Death Shadow you think is. Uh, is it Grixis? Is it uh, Jund? Is it um, the Rakdos build? Or is it something else? Um, let me know what you guys think um, if you are aware of, of, of Death Shadow decks and what you feel like uh, might be the better build. Um, this is my personal preference. I think Grixis is a better build, uh, in my opinion. Um, but let me know in the comments below, guys. Thanks so much for watching. As always, guys, everything on the stack has resolved. And uh, good games, everyone.